art and character designs provided by Demon Artie. Be sure to follow her over on Twitter, at Artie Demon. Want to be first to have access to early artwork, concept sketches, exclusive art that can't be seen anywhere else? Then support Demon Artie over on her Patreon. Link in description below. Welcome everyone back to the Crimson 15 Podcast. I am your host, Crimson Sin. Be sure to check us out over on Twitter, at C15 Podcast. Join the discussion over on Discord, link in the description below. And if you're enjoying the videos, be sure to sub, like, share, and hit that bell for notifications. We're up to episode 7 in the Owl House, Lost in Language. I, I thought this was going to be a play on Lost in Translation, but it has nothing to do with that movie. Look at this, only three writers. Uh, uh, they're, they're almost there. That's probably why this is probably my favorite episode so far. Not perfect. There's some weird stuff, and Luce does some weird stuff that I don't necessarily like. She, you know, she comes to peer pressure and all that. But then in the end, she does the right thing. In the end, she tries to be a good friend, which is nice. And for the first time, what's happening to Luce is more important and more interesting than what's happening to um, Ida. So we open up, and we get this kind of... She's still reading those Azura books, The Good Witch. They, they fill her head with all these ideas that just aren't true. I thought she kind of got over it. But she still is in love with the idea of like, oh, Azura is making a friend with like the enemy witch. And she's like, I wish I could do that. Every time she's trying to try to do something that's in her book, it's blown up in her face. Come on, Luce. You got to start realizing that's just fantasy and fake. And what you're doing, it's not going to be like that. She's like reading it. And I kind of like how <laughs> they, they make these fourth wall jokes where they're making fun of us, the viewers. They're making fun of cartoons. They're making fun of fandoms. And that's nice and all. It's just... One joke per episode, but they do it a couple of times because uh, King here is like, oh, you sucked me into your crazy fandom. Those are meant to be annihilated, not befriended. Now keep reading. I've been sucked into your awful fandom. Okay. Would, would he use the word fandom? Would he even know what that is? Luce saying that makes sense, but King saying it? Where would he have picked that up? Ugh, whatever. It, it's still, it's an okay joke. Then they hear a knock at the door because like in the book, the book's like, and then the door opened and then the door actually opens. Oh no, the book's alive, but... It's just a co literally a coincidence. It's like, oh, you know, you got a package. And they bring it to the table and it's like a little baby. And King's like, oh, yeah, I can't wait to eat this. <laughs> he's a he's, he's a monster. Mmm, fresh meat. Nope, not eating that. Witches eating babies is so 1693. You know, a demon of sorts. So does he eat babies normally? Like, is that like a thing? But even eat is like, oh, eating babies. That's like so like 16th century or whatever. So like they used to eat babies. But I guess some person dropped off this baby and say, hey, watch my kid to the morning from Yee Yee. And I guess Yee Yee is this uh, very rich lady, like the Bat Queen. So I'm thinking, oh, she like part bad. Is she like cool looking? She's actually really scary, but not in a traditional way. But when we get, she gets to you see her at the end. She's like, I'll pay you really like XOXO hugs and kisses. Like, okay. But there's some money there. And then Ida's like, okay, I'm all about them ducats. So she's going to do it. And it's going to be easy. He's got to watch a kid till morning. Nothing, nothing wrong with that. Luce is all like, oh, it's so sweet watching a baby. We're going to learn and grow together as a family through the eyes of a child. They open up the, the blanket and the baby is like a, it's a bat baby, but it's like regular, like human. It's just, it's a pretty creepy looking thing. And it starts to like sh scream and they're like, oh crap. I, it gets so loud. It actually, I actually had to turn down my speakers because it actually was kind of crackling. <laughs> So this thing's super loud and irritating, but I guess Luz had to return some books because they don't want to split the money with her. Ida's not a good person. She's so bad. So she doesn't want to share the money with uh, Luz, so she gave her this little task to do. But now that the baby's screaming, they like want her help. She's like, nope, I got to go return these books. So that's our setup. And we have our A plot and B plot. I Normally the A plot is the more important one, is the first one that's introduced. But watching this baby is such a small part of this episode it might as well not have been part of this episode. It, there's some uh, implications at the end, but they could have done a different way for that to happen, you know, like this whole watching a baby thing. So she gets to the uh, library, and it's pretty cool looking. I like the design. And he, she, she goes to return the books, and all the books are late. And there's even a little like uh, picture frame saying uh, her library card's been revoked, and it's like Ida like, doing like a yeah. So she's been like kicked out of this library, but I guess they still take back her books. And he's like, well, we'll just put it on her tab, whatever. I guess they're closing early because there's a wailing star uh, festival. Like the star literally like cries. It's okay. And this, I thought this was a little rude. Really? You're not going to help her? Like, guys, oh, is this guy like prejudiced against her because she's human? Is that what it is? Or is he just honestly just a jerk to everybody? I don't like that. It's dumb. <sighs> I'll put them on her tab. By the way, we're closing early for the wailing star meteor shower. Ooh, what's that? 
You're in a library. Read a book. There's, uh, oh my goodness, the freaking puns. Remember the Dewey Decimal System? <laughs> I bet none of you kids have ever used it. I did. But there's a demon uh, decibel system. This is what you used to have to do when there was no computers. You would pull out the cards and then everything would be done, you know, like a special code and that was where the book would be. But you had to physically look for it. And there was like thousands of these, depending on how big the library was, there could be thousands of these little cards. So you're not supposed to feed them, but she like feeds one of them and then like spits out a bunch of cards. So she wasn't even looking for anything. She was just, I don't know, just screwing around. That's all she does this whole like first part is just a montage of screwing around. She likes being here. It's so cool. She grabs one of the books. So the books are like putting themselves away or they're just floating in the sky. She grabs onto one of them. She's like yelling and screaming. Everyone's telling her, shut the hell up, dummy. It's a library. People are looking at crystal balls like they're the internet. There's a thing about learning how to fly. Someone's looking at cat videos. Remember cat videos? And then like someone's uh, little thing's still loading. So why have the, the card system when you have these things that could just be magical? You just talk to the orb and say, hey, I'm looking for a book on uh, water demons and then it should find it. What's the point of the card catalog? Seriously, what the hell? We hear, uh, oh, again, people, I have a, I say my biggest thing is people's names. And especially when people's names are weird. A Amit, Amity. Amity? Amity? Is that, is that right? This is a Rogelio situation where it literally took me five seasons to say that freaking character's name right. So, Amity? I hope I'm saying it right. A, a loose hairs, hairs her. So like, oh no, she found me. And because, you know, they're still kind of like, they say they're rivals, but they're not rivals. She just doesn't like you. You would have to, there's there's more to a rival, but I guess she's all, you know, her head's filled with all those stupid books she reads. So she's like, oh no. But we see this absolutely 1000% adorable. It's super sweet. I love this. She's reading like a little storybook to the kids, like, you know, uh, storybook time in the library. And she's like reading it out. Oh, it's about like this uh, this little guy and he's he sews books and all he wants is a friend. And oh, and he has a friend. He found a friend. And it's it's really sweet. And you can just see the the parallels here about all oh, making friends and how the, 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 the thread can bind you. And it's and it's, a, you know, you're getting closer together. I love it. It's super, super cute. And even uh, Lucy's like, oh, my God, it's so adorable. And look at this little dude with the teeth. Isn't that <laughs> disturbingly adorable is, is that a thing Hi. goodbye miss amity thank you thank you braxis see you next time <sighs> that voice saying those words but it's super it's super cute and then of course lucy's is there it's like oh she kind of pops up and says, oh what are you doing here and of course amit amity amity is like oh what are you what are you doing here and, uh, is that kind of giving her guff lucy's like oh wow you reading uh books to children that's really nice you know it's very kind of you and she's trying to be her friend, and I can understand everything Amity says right here. But every time you come near me, I get in trouble. Just leave me alone. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's true. <laughs> but she has to still also realize not a lot. A lot of that wasn't necessarily Luz's fault. Like she didn't do it on purpose. There was no animosity. Like she didn't like. Oh, I can't wait to get her. Everything was just big mistakes were made. But I can understand why she doesn't want her around. And you can kind of tell like, I mean, just look at these expressions. It's not anger or hatred. It's just like, you, you seem to mess everything up when you're around. You know, Luce is like, Ugh, I came on too short because she's such a weirdo. She always jumps out there and she's super loud. And then she's kind of even like, you know, kind of hitting herself like, dang it. Why, why do I got to say things like that? Why do I got to, why can't I just be <laughs> just a normal friend? Why do I have to be this goofy over the top friend? Then we get to see these two cuties and <laughs> they're like, Hey, don't let her, uh, don't let her get to you. I'm like, Oh, what the heck? And then I'm like, who are these two people? And they call out to her. Hey mittens. That, that's like their nickname for her. I'm like, Oh, these are cousins or something or other friends or upperclassmen. Cause they definitely look older than, uh, loose in Amity. And she's like, Oh, we're on this uh, mission here. We, we came to bring you your little lunch that you forgot. And it's like in a cutesy little like bunny bag. <laughs> this thing's adorable as hell. And they bring it to her and they're just giving her guff because like they're all they're all their siblings. So like, oh yeah, mom said don't forget this. Oh, okay, they're related. They're just kind of messing with them. I'm thinking, okay, these two, are they gonna be good friends or bad friends? And then it kind of starts out like, oh, they're 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 being a little too nice. And I'm always uh, suspicious of super nice people. Like, okay, what's what's your deal? What do you want from me? But um, yeah, they have names, and you know how bad I am with names, so I'm not gonna know. I'm not going to be able to remember their names unless they come up a lot. But uh, the, this girl here, hey, hey, you know what? Girls with uh, beauty marks, super adorable, A+. plus. She's super cute. And she's like, oh, hey, uh, why are you being so mean to your friend? And oh, she's not my friend. And then they're just kind of like, oh, they kind of give each other this look. 
and it's like, oh, we can use this girl to screw with her. That's not a reason to be someone's friend. <laughs> these these are actually not very good people because they just want to goof around and have fun. So like, oh, come on, hang out with us. Luce is like, oh, this is awesome. People want to be my friend. This is where she kind of succumbs to the peer pressure because they don't just want to go hang out at the library and read books. They want to like, they want to just mess with stuff. And of course, this guy's, you know, he's cute he's handsome and he kind of gets like oh come on you know you want to hang out with us and she kind of has that little blushy face yeah makes sense she seems too cool for you i am you can leave now all of you <laughs> <laughs> i like that i like the fact that loose likes boys i i brought it up in the other episode but it's such a rarity to see a character like kind of like the opposite gender like it's almost against the rules they kind of do a little thing at the end here but i like that it's it, it, it's a victory for me so they're gonna go have fun and this joke isn't funny it's not funny at all and they do the comedy you can do the triple you can return to a joke three times and that's the maximum they do this is the one they choose and it's not funny i'll play it out fiction fiction is our world but fiction then what in my life is real anymore? <laughs> Did anyone laugh? Why would he react that way? That doesn't make any sense. If it's something that could be easily erased, maybe someone erased it. And you can tell that they erased it. So why? What's up with this overreaction? It doesn't make any sense. Then one guy's putting away books and they keep returning the book. Um, they're wearing blue. So are they illusion school students? But this is an illusion magic. This is just like a, like a telekinesis type magic or just moving objects type magic. So that's not part of the illusion school okay whatever if they made him think there was more books than they were that would be an illusion but this isn't an illusion unless multiple uh guilds or whatever uh covens have the same similar colors but i i thought this was the same color anyways uh then they make the other guy come back and switch spaces oh no my life is over again <laughs> huh no not again <laughs> Wasn't funny the first time. Wasn't funny the third, the second time. Uh, they're screwing with the card catalog and then Luce is like jumping around in the mess. Luce, you, you got to realize this is a library. This is not appropriate. You're not doing anything good here. You're doing bad things. You're making a mess for someone to have to clean up. Amity goes and gets one of the, uh, gets the library guy, the head uh, librarian. And they do the, the joke again. Uh, wait, where's Gary? Coming. No! <laughs> They bring in the other guy, but he's like, oh no, and he does the whole, like, my life is over thing. Thank goodness they don't do it again. But they get kicked out for making libraries too fun. No, they weren't making it fun. They were causing a ruckus, and people are there to study and stuff, not to, like, watch you do stupid pranks. So that was really dumb. But Luce is, like, just happy to be hanging out with friends and stuff. She, she's like, oh, man, I can't believe she's even more mad at me now, and that wasn't, I, I wanted her to be my friend. And then they're kind of cool here. Like, oh, no, she's not that mad at you. She's really mad. She'd do this. Like, no, when Mittens gets mad, she looks like this. <gasps> Whoa. I almost passed out. But like, hey, you're pretty cool. Like, you can be our friend. Like, don't don't even worry about her. You can be hanging out with us. We're going to go get a book that we forgot to get, you know, uh, because we got kicked out. You know, we're going to come back later and like basically break in. And I'm thinking, oh, here we go. This is the whole, oh, you're going to succumb to the peer pressure. And she totally does. And this is where I'm thinking of. Remember that episode of Hey Arnold where that one cool guy was Arnold's friend just so because he knew he could fit into that place and open up the door so they can go rob that one place. So this is kind of similar, not as um, sinister as that, because they just want, they literally just want to goof off. They're kind of using Luce. A part of me thinks they were using her because they know that their little sister doesn't like her. Oh, we'll, we'll be her friend. It'll piss her off even more. And we get to break into the library and have fun with another person. Not good people. But uh, Luce is like, oh, wow, that's so awesome and everything. And then she's running down the stairs and then we see Amity does the whole, like, get really mad thing. First I befriend the siblings, then I befriend the Amity. <laughs> <gasps> almost passed out. And they like, oh my god, I almost passed out. <laughs> it's funny how they know each other. That was a good gag. Get back to Edda and they're watching the baby, Eda, and the baby's crying and crying and crying. Like, forget it. No money is worth this. 
And then th- this is what I thought was like strange. Like, so they decide to like pick the baby up. Yeah, duh. That's like what you do when a baby cries, you pick it up. So the baby stops crying. And then it's like, you know, Ida's like trying to do like her motherly instincts, you know, like, oh, rock the baby. Like she doesn't know what to say. Luz comes back and she's super jazzed because, oh, I got cool friends and they're older kids too. So that makes it even cooler. And she sees Ida with the baby. She's like, oh, Ida, you're holding the baby. It's so, you look so cute. You're so motherly. And she's like, don't ever say that again. I'm going to kill you if you say that again. And in a very disgusting turn of events, it like multiplies. Not around this cute little baby. <laughs> oh, it's so gross. So these things are flying around. Now there's three babies and they're freaking out and like, oh, God, what are we going to do? Luz is like, oh, I have to go back out. See you later. Good luck with the babies. She takes off and gets back to the library where they're going to kind of break in. Luz is trying to be cool. Like, oh, how do I, how do I look cool? Like she's trying to lean against the pillar and do stuff. But they're already there and they're just like watching her. And she, she's like super embarrassed. Oh, hey guys. She's like, oh, don't worry. That was really cool. We just wanted to, whatever you were doing, that was really awesome. We wanted to see it. And look at their after school clothes. Super adorable. They use a, they don't use a normal spell. It's like a scroll. Uh, I guess this would be kind of like a um, talisman type spell. And it's an unlock thing. So they put it on there to open up the library and they get in there. Come on. That whole wailing star thing happens. And it's it's kind of dumb that this this happens. It's just just to further the events because it, why would this make this happen? It doesn't make any sense. Like it's a star that literally screams like it sounds like a little kid going, Whoa. So something cool was supposed to happen. Ah, nothing happened, but look, all the books are glowing. So I made all the books come to life. Like you could open the book and then whatever it was about, like stuff would come out of it. So if you opened a book about baking, it, like it, cakes and cookies would come out. So you opens a book about these birds and all the birds come flying out. So, oh, they're going to have more fun. They're looking at fashion magazines and it's like giving all these cool fashions and stuff. Luce does it like a, a witch one. Oh, it's like a warrior one or something. Okay, we get it. You watched Final Fantasy. You played Final Fantasy VII once. We get it. They do this comic book one, which I thought was kind of funny, but it's also really stupid, but it did make me laugh though. Nothing happened. <gasps> wow. Okay, that was kind of that was kind of cool. Then they have a snowball fight because they have a book, The History of Snowballs, and they're snowballing each other. <laughs> okay, <laughs> this is, but it's funny because once you close the book, all the magic goes away. So whatever mess they make, it just goes away. Uh, they're like fighting and everything and just having a lot of fun. Luz, Luz finds that little book that uh, Am- Amity was uh, reading and it's this cute little bunny guy she opens it up and he pops out and she's like oh he's so cute she's like reading the book about making friends then we get back to Ida and the the babies are screaming they're running around they're destroying everything like what are we gonna do and this is the fourth wall breaking stuff it's a fun commentary but it makes no sense for King to say this because how does he know what television is what silences children what if we invent a tv network for ages 6 to 11 that's insane ah there's only one way out of this okay is that a shot at cartoon network <laughs> i'm so i get it it is it's, it is but eat is like that's stupid that would never work <laughs> so she pulls out like a switchblade like and then king's even like oh my goodness you're gonna kill these babies and she's like no pulls out an apple it's apple slices and story time works on kids every time it's apple Apple slices, uh, Go-Gurts, <laughs> strawberries, little snacks in story time. Kids love it. So all the kids like sit in a circle and even uh, King sits down. So it's just like the whole library thing. And then she opens up the book and it's the same book about that little guy making friends. And of course, he is like, here you go. And she starts to read it. Get back to loose and it's super adorable. Look at this little guy. He's just cute as hell. I'm just, are they twins? I'm going to call them twins. The, the twins show up and like, hey, uh, look at this. I go, cool. This is the little ducky comes out and Luz's like, oh my goodness, he's so adorable. But look what you can do. If you draw on the book, you can affect the picture. So they drew like these like muscle legs on him and it com- it, it, it happens to the duck duckling. He The duck's like, oh my God, it's all freaking out. But then they close the book and uh, Eat is, uh, Luz is like, oh geez guys, well, why'd you do that? Not only it's defracing property, you also made like this thing suffer. Even though it's like a magical thing, you don't want to watch something like scream and tear. You know what I'm saying? I don't know the whole moral justification of that. I wouldn't do it. Even if it's like, oh, it's magic. It's not real. No, I don't want to watch this thing that's supposed to be cute and adorable be tortured in a weird way. It's like, here, Lucy, why don't you do one? She's like, no, this is good. She's like, no, I'm not going to do it. But the guy being, you know, like, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll show you how. And it grabs her hand and like does it. She didn't really resist him all that much, but she, and made that little bunny guy like me. 
and like gave him like claws and stuff. And then Luke's like, no, I don't want to see it. She just closed the book. And they're kind of cool with it. Like, okay, yeah, whatever. Come on, let's go. She drops the book, but it's still open. So this monster version of that character came to life. Like, okay, this is going to be the bad guy they got to fight. They get to the romance section. And even like, Luz is like, oh, this is super lame unless you're into that. But she totally likes the romance and love and all that. I wouldn't be comfortable opening up some romance books and make them come to life. That may be a little too inappropriate, especially for the ages we're got here. But this is the book they were coming to get. <laughs> There's a secret room. And the lone witch's secret room. Like literally the book says it. So when you pull the, the thing, it opens up. And we see kind of a cool little setup. And I'm like, oh my goodness, that's a, a good Witch Azura book. I'm like, how the hell is that here? Like I literally noticed that like as soon as they showed it in the background there. Lou's like, oh, this is really cool. It's your secret little like uh, clubhouse, your little hideaway. And they're like, no way, that's so stupid. Why would we be Why would we have to be in a library? So they kind of make fun of it. They're like, no, this is uh, our sisters. This is uh, Amity's. And she's like, oh. That's, you know, inappropriate. You shouldn't be invading your little sister's private space. But she's kind of like, oh, okay, what are we doing here? Oh, we're looking for her diary. We're going to get it and then get all the pages and like plaster it around the school to teach her a lesson. <laughs> that is, that's the next level. And even Lou says it. She's like, wow, that's way too much. Yeah, but you see the way she treats you and the way she treats other people. Uh, she deserves this. We have to teach her a lesson. Mm, these, these these, this brother and sister are awful, awful people. I got a huge family. And yeah, we screwed with each other. I couldn't even imagine doing something like this. And my younger siblings are, can, can be a little much. <laughs> I couldn't even fathom to doing something like this. But like, oh no, it's going to be great. Don't you want to do that? Like, just trying to talk her into it. And Lucy's like, oh geez, um, I don't know. Uh, and so she, they start looking around for this uh, diary and then she sees the, the Good Witch Azura book. She's like, oh my goodness, how do, how do they have these? Here's my theory. The Good Witch Azura is an actual witch and she wrote her stories and sold them on earth and also sold them here. That 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 is my theory that this good witch is, a, is an actual real witch in this world. If I got it right, I win one uh, internet dollar. But she's like, oh, wow. This is so, and also knowing this is uh, Amity's room, she's into this series too. So that's a connection they have. Oh, we can talk about this book series. How cool is that? Then she sees another book and she's like, whoa, is this like a handmade one? Because it has like a, a drawing on it. She opens it up. And then since this is the, the boiling star made everything come to life. Oh, they found her diary and then it starts, you know, talking about stuff like, oh, I don't know about this girl, Luce. I don't know what her deal is. It's like, oh, she closes it right away because she knows that that's inappropriate that you don't. That's something for her. If she shares it with you, that's one thing. But to break in there and steal it, that that is such a personal boundary you do not cross. And what Luce does here is great. This really made me like her so much. She closes it and she's like, oh. No, 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 this is nothing. It's just uh, one of the Good Witch Azura books. It's volume five. Ha, ha. Then they take it from her and they start reading it. Oh, this is her diary. Were you trying to hide this from me? And she's like, come on, guys. Let's not do this. This that, That's, I don't care what, how mean she is to me. No one deserves to have this done to them, which is 100% true. Luce gets a, uh, she, she just, she just climbed a rung on the ladder of characters that I like because she even was fighting over it. Hey, no, I'm taking this back. So she starts pulling on it. But remember how weak she was in that first episode and now she can fight this teenage boy. Like, couldn't he just rip it out of her hands without it even being an issue? Whatever. Continuity, right? Continuity. Some of the pages start falling out and everything. And then Luce, all oh, trying to gather them all because it's saying all the secrets. <sighs> Who shows up? Amity shows up and she sees Luce with the diary. And she's like, oh my goodness, I can't freaking believe this. What are you doing here? But come on, put two and two together. How would she have found this? How would she have known about this? She sees, but it, because obviously her, her older uh, brother and sister are there. She just lays it in on, on Luce. I can't believe you. And she calls her a bully, a bully of circumstance because she has to realize she's not doing this stuff on purpose. Because she can see that she's being nice to people and it's not that fake kind of nice. Like how she's, Amity can be fake nice. She just blames her, you know, for, I can't believe you. She just walks out of there. And then the brother and sister start laughing. And this is weird. They're very, um, even though they had this huge fight over not doing this whole thing where Luce said, no, we're not going to do this whole diary thing you want to do. They're like, hey, we're going to go hang out. Want to come with us? And even Luce is like, you guys are cool and all, but uh, not right now. I'm going to go talk to Amity and I'm going to try to fix this because I, I'm not going to let her think that, you know, I, I, I wasn't going to do that. I don't want her to know, think that I, I wanted to like steal her diary. Then like the sister calls her like a cutie or something and then she kind of blushes. All right. See you around, cutie. Okay. <laughs> 
she finds her and she's like, hey, wait up. And you could tell that she was like kind of upset. She kind of rubbed her eyes and everything because yeah, that's that's a private thing. And then now people know, you know, not a lot of people know about it, but they do know about it. And she's like, what's your deal? You you want to you want to bully me? Now you want to be my friend? What's going on? But that's just like, no, that's not what was happening. I'm sorry that that happened. But that giant monster came out and it's, it's a decent design. And it's a perversion of the story. Oh, his character wanted to make friends. So it's going to make friends by like capturing you or whatever. So I'm like, ah, oh, geez. So it's chasing him down. Of course, it's doing little rhymes. It grabs uh, Amity. It's going to sew her into the book. And it's doing little rhymes. Okay, but... When you get sewed into the book, you like become part of the book. Um, what's the rules here? So when the star goes away, do, do you die? <laughs> do, you, do you have to wait for the next star to come by to be brought back to life? Or I, I, Again, they never explain any of that, but I want to kind of know what the implications here. Then I thought this was pretty cool, but Luce, you idiot. You didn't do it right. You just did all the superficial crap. Drawn okay? I kind of interpreted the descriptions. Loose! Ah, right. See a big poof of smoke, and she's wearing Good Witch Azura costume. And she's like, oh, did, did I get it right or whatever? I just kind of went by the description. So she made herself like this powerful uh, witch. I'm like, oh, cool. She can have all kinds of powers. And she writes, and then her staff went into her hand. And it's a pretty cool looking staff. But she didn't she didn't write in there that it had any powers. So it's just a stick. So she swings the stick at the monster. He just grabs it and throws it and closes the book. She loses all that power. She didn't, she didn't even have any power. I'm like, oh, that could have been so cool, but Luz, you freaking idiot. She starts to get sewn in the book, and then she's like, oh, good. We're going to be stuck here forever. And she's like, nope, uh, I got a plan. So she starts to, like, rock the book and makes it fall over. And since one arm, both they both have one arm tied in, so they're, like, running with the book or whatever. <laughs> and he's like, what are we going to do? She's like, I didn't even think that was going to work, so I have no idea what we're doing. And she, she can't help but laugh. She's like, oh, my goodness, you, you, you're you such a, just you just go by, you fly by wire. But they're getting caught up by the monster and everything, and he's starting to sew again. But Amity is able to grab onto like a bookcase and pull her off the thing. So, but now Luce is stuck in the book. Oh, she saved her, so she's gonna come back, and she like rams a card into it and everything. Why isn't she casting spells? Doesn't she have that abomination thing? I make a bunch of them, or can she do any other magic? We've only seen her do that. So, okay, it would have been nice to see her use magic instead of just like using physical force. Get her out of the book. They start to run away, but it catches up to them. <sighs> Puns. So it's starting to sew up uh, Luz again. And then Amity writes in the book, oh, Luz needed to make fix a mistake. Like she's doing like a thing. And then she gets a big magic eraser. I'm surprised freaking Mr. Clean wasn't there. Throws her the eraser and erases the, uh, the evil version of him out of the book. And Boop becomes the normal person. And it's super cute because... She gets to meet the character that she's been reading this character's books like ever since she was a little girl. And then now she gets to like hold him. That is so absolutely adorable. Like, wouldn't it be great to like meet Corduroy? <laughs> yeah, like he just comes to life and he can like hang out with him for a little bit. Or, like Winnie the Pooh or something. That'd be so cool. But she's like, oh no, it's okay. We're still friends. Even though he's like, he says, I'm sorry. I don't know what came over me. You know, I'm, I was a bad friend. It's like, no, 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 we're still friends. And she kind of like gives him that reassuring smile. This right here. This is an honest to God, good beautiful kind smile i love it when characters show these kinds of emotions but they close the book and then it goes away and they see each other and they kind of look at each other and it gets this daylight now they're there all night because they had to clean up because even Luz is like oh thank you for helping me clean up and then she's like you know i'm sorry she's like oh we'll, we'll never talk about this again so she's back to being stone cold you know what but she's like you know what i'm sorry for everything i know this doesn't make up for it but i know she didn't have the next volume of the good witches or you can borrow my book so you can read it She's like, oh, thanks. And then she takes it and walks away. So we're the building blocks to this being a real friendship. I I'm glad it's taking a couple of episodes. I'm glad they, they didn't just become insto friends. And she's still kind of, uh, you know, apprehensive about it. But she has to know Luce has a good heart. She's a complete spaz. <laughs> no doubt about it. This girl is all over the place. But she does have a good heart. And she would not purposely hurt anybody she might do it by accident because she's kind of a dummy but she's a good person I, I think she's starting to see that she gets home and look at this eat is asleep with all the babies in her arms and she has that smile on her face that, that only a mother could have with her babies even though they're not her babies then the bat queen shows up and you must be mama you you 
Mama is I, and I is the Bat Queen. Oh, God. Okay, we get it. You see in a Miyazaki film. We get it. Big giant heads. It's, she's Yubaba. And she has like a weird voice. She's like, oh, you must be Mama. Yes, I'm Mama. And where are my little cuddle babies? Like she has like this really weird accent. The babies wake up and come to her. It's like, oh, this is for Ida. And she like barfs up a freaking treasure chest. And then like a magic whistle. I'm assuming this whistle is going to be able to summon her or summon bats or do something of that nature. She's like, oh, Ida deserves all this. She did a good job. She flies away. Ida wakes up and she's like, where are my babies? The babies, where are they at? Luz just doesn't say it. She does it through sign language. Ah, sweet babies. Babies? Where are the babies? Oh. Like, oh, the mom came and got him, and then they're sad because the babies are gone. Because as much as an awful, horrible, terrible job it is to watch babies, they're babies, and you got to protect them. And it, it's human nature to want to protect these little things because they can't protect themselves. They can't feed themselves. They can't do anything. You have to be there for them. And so, like, they kind of have a little, like, pouting about it. Like, oh, no, my babies. But she's like, oh, look at all this money you got. And you got this really cool whistle. But, you know, they miss the babies. And then <laughs> Luz like, I got you a book. Uh, how to deal with an empty nest. It was only one day. Like, it wasn't like she watched these kids for, like, months. And then it's just one day. So she got her this, this silly book. And then uh, it's like, oh, you saw so how was your night? Oh, it was, it was good. Then bad. Then it ended good. It's like, oh, that's nice. Hootie's like, want to hear about my day? And like, no, Hootie, no one ever wants to hear about your day. They're so mean to the guy. <laughs> like, geez, he's trying to make conversation. But end of the episode, for all the little weird things here and there, this was a solid good episode. Definitely my favorite episode of the series. Move the story forward a little bit with her friendship with, uh, Am Amity. But is that really all that important? What's the, the whole curse with Ida? Is Luz ever going to become this full witch and like go home? Like none of those answers, none of those questions got any type of answering. But it was nice to see her trying to build that friendship with another person. Her older brother and sister, they're not good people. They're definitely bad people. And hopefully, mm, I don't want them to become like bad guys. But she shouldn't really hang out with them because they're really not good for her. Especially because they're going to play to her crazy side. The side that wants to goof off and have fun. And it's if you want to be this witch... You're going to need a little bit of discipline. But, um, yeah, pretty decent favorite episode so far. Odebin couldn't believe his luck. So bookmaker Odebin surrounded by friends bound a book of friendship. And that's the end. Crimson Saint here. Thanks for watching the video. If you're enjoying the content, be sure to sub, like, share, and hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss a single upload. If you have any tips or story ideas, hit us up on Twitter at C15Podcast, or better yet, join our Discord server. Link in the description below.